Good morning. Uh, welcome to another episode of Beyond the Title. Uh, with me today, I have the country head for Love Bonito, Bianca Belmadia. Bianca, thank you for joining us today. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. <laughs> thank you. Fantastic. It's lovely to have you here um, to find out a bit more about you. Um, for once, this isn't going to be uh, an in-depth grilling of your knowledge of, of your area and your expertise. This is to find out about you as a person, um, as the name suggests, beyond the title, as we're going beyond the title of Country Head and finding out um, uh, more about Bianca. Thank so, you. That, that's a good, refreshing, uh, I guess, conversation that we're going to have today. That's excellent. So, <laughs> so for the first question, I'm going to ask, what is your ikigai? And for those uninitiated watching, um, ikigai is a Japanese phrase meaning your reason for being or your reason for jumping out of bed in the morning. I think especially in um, today's circumstances, I think just be grateful and enjoying life despite circumstances. I think that 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 is valid for today. But I think beyond today, I think definitely my ikigai is the people that I lead, um, also the customers that we serve. And luckily, I'm managing and leading a brand that is purposeful for women and um, for equality for women. So I think that is what really makes my day quite purposeful, even for myself that's leading the company. Fantastic, that's such a powerful, positive cause. Thank you. Which movie character best represents you and why? This question got me thinking for a little while because I've never really thought myself as a movie character, but I think when I, actually think about it, I think a character that's really cool that I wish I am is Daenerys Targaryen from Game of Thrones. Fantastic, Mother of Dragons. Dragons. Um, I think why is she the one that I picked is because she can really turn any situations to be able for her to just rise up and to the occasion and just, you know, uh, really, really make the bad, uh, worst situation that could happen to a good one or uh, in ways that you can still be able to uh, contribute to society. Brilliant, thank you. Which app could you not live without and why? Which app? I think especially these days, I think all the streaming apps like we are today on um, YouTube and uh, Netflix uh, and definitely for work Slack and all the Google things. That mm -hmm. really saved our life, especially when we're working from home. It's brilliant. It's such a, a good way to, to stay connected. Um, I, yeah, I thank heavens for the internet. <laughs> um, it, get, it gets a bad rap a lot of the time and um, for, for a lot of negative reasons. But I think bringing people together and keeping people connected um, it has been so invaluable. Yes, definitely. And the movies is good too. too. Oh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd, yeah. I might have to take up, uh, take up uh, jigsaw puzzles and I'm not very good at them. <laughs> uh, what advice would you give to your 21 year old self if you could? Um, I think ride on that ambition, that go getter mindset and that hustler mentality. Because I think when you're 21, everyone kind of says you're a bit young, too young, uh, right? With no experience, mm. but don't let that stop you because I think when you're 21, you do have that like energy and drive that you probably won't have when you're in your 30, right? So I guess really do write on that momentum, that ambition and that just hustler mindset. That's fantastic advice, thank you. What's the harshest feedback you've ever received? I think too young is something that I've gotten a few times. Um, and then um, just people don't really, say it right to my face but you can't do it but you can mm. really tell that that's what they're saying so i think that is probably one of the two of the things that actually really drive me are those really negative feedback because you just kind of want to prove them all so yeah absolutely and it seems like you have so <laughs> well done what's the biggest leadership challenge you're facing during um current crisis um, I think definitely in crises, uh, we have to kind of balance the needs of the company, which sometimes can be quite tricky uh, with the needs and the livelihood for the team and the people. And at the end of the day, as a company, we need to be fair with our people. We also need to be 
fair to see what's the condition of the company. And I think right now, those balancing act is probably the way to test a person's leadership. Yeah, just like mine. Brilliant, thank you. What are your predictions for the new normal in the digital world 2.0? Um, I think everything that we're seeing today, like health, basic needs, uh, being with family will still be primary focus, right? Uh, but I think beyond that, beyond the lockdown, beyond the, uh, I guess, just social distancing, um, everyone is moving to digital. And I think that is inevitable, um, even for the most conventional businesses. So I think times has just really, really changed. And uh, especially in a country like where I am from, Indonesia, a country that's probably from a technology standpoint, a bit more behind, um, it just kind of forces everyone to change and change the way they do uh, and operate as a business and also change the way we communicate to our consumers. So there's a lot of changes. Definitely. What are your hopes for the future? Um, my hope for the future is to not go back to uh, where we were before, uh, because I think that's just, I, I don't, I, I think there's this period of life for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. So, but I think for us to evolve as humans, as businesses, and as species to new way of living and contributing to hopefully make this world a better place. Fantastic. I certainly hope so. Yeah. Um, what do you think will change permanently within your industry? Um, I think because I, I came from retail and I think retail is probably one of the most conventional businesses there is in the industry. I think that needs to be changed. That will change dramatically. Uh, I think for people or businesses that has been around for two, three decades doesn't mean they're going to be around for another one, two decades. You know, I, I think sometimes uh, people in the industry are a bit stubborn. And I think with this, it's kind of like a wake up call for everyone to kind of just shift. And if you want to stay with the new, then you kind of need to to do a lot of major changes. Yeah. This is a sort of really rapid transformation and evolution almost of, of, of retail. Yeah. Onto a slightly sillier question. Okay. Can you tell us one weird fact about you? Um, one, I, I, I don't eat banana that is like in a shape of a, a banana, but I do drink banana like strawberry smoothie. So that's, I guess, a bit interesting. I don't know. <laughs> I, I couldn't think. Of I myself. don't. I don't like banana at all. But I can. I can taste it in any smoothie, and I. Uh, I, I can't start even if you hide it with all the strawberries in the world. I'll still taste that that one drop of banana. Oh, so we have something in common. <laughs> yes, and I think actually one of our previous uh, Beyond the Title speakers as well, uh, Lena Koscheck from uh, Tom Dixon, uh, she also hates, that was her fun fact is that she hates banana. So I think we're gathering a good collective uh, of people and we can, we can take bananas down. <laughs> yeah. And I have one more thing. Um, so I guess uh, I was, I was never actually legally able to drink when I was studying in the US. So I graduated when I was 20. So my mm. whole college years, I was, I, I had my fair share of uh, fun days, but I guess I wasn't technically legal because the legal age in the US was 21, so. Ah, you see, should have, should have gone to university in the UK. We can, we can drink and uh, and uh, I'm, I'm confident that the, the majority, vast majority of students in the UK uh, take advantage of that uh, significantly. Yep. yep. <laughs> uh, what's your motto in life? Um, I think I have, I have a few, but I guess for leadership, I, I believe that, a, and someone told me this and I, I did not make this up, but a, some, a company can only grow if the leaders continue to strive for growth. I think, I think that is one of the, I guess, advice that really struck me. Um, and that's where I really push myself to grow. And I, I, I feel that if I am myself, I'm not growing, I don't think whatever ship that I'm trying to sail is going to, you know, go to the next stage. Um, and secondly, I think for me, success and whether it's like company success, personal success will only come if there is like consistency and discipline. So I think, 
I mean, we hear the saying success doesn't come overnight. I think we all know that. But I think the hardest part is consistency and discipline because I always say to people, starting a business is easy. I think being disciplined and consistent and just going in day in and day out to give you 110%, it's where the hard part is, you know, so. Totally, that makes, that makes total sense. Um, fantastic, thank you so much. Um, those are all the questions that I have for you today. Uh, so that's, um, if everyone give a, a, a nice wave on the on the comments to Bianca Del Nadia from Love Benito. And don't miss Nadia's, um, uh, Del Nadia, words. Bianca Del Nadia's uh, panel discussion. Uh, Bianca is going to be joining us next week, next Thursday for Reshape Virtual Summit. Um, if you haven't got your tickets already, they are free. Uh, please go to www.reshapesummit.com. Um, yeah, Bianca will be there. So will so many other fantastic uh, speakers like her. It's going to be a brilliant day. I hope to see you there. Thank Thanks, you, everyone. Bianca. Thanks. Bye-bye.